Hey everybody, this is yet another run of Critical Mode, a challenge for Killing Floor 2 created by Newt Newt, where the goal is to complete a 10 wave vanilla Hell on Earth difficulty match as a level 0 perk of my choosing. Now today's run will take place on Vulture Manor as SWAT perk, and the rules for the run are as follows. Number 1, no DLC weapons can be used. Number 2, no off perk weapons can be used. Number 3, official maps only, which again will be Vulture Manor in this case. And last but not least, the player must remain level 0 for the entire match. Now in previous iterations of this challenge, uh, namely the level 0 plus challenge created by Fat Cat, uh, the player actually would earn XP and would end up being somewhere between level 3 and 5 by the end of the match. However, in this case, in critical mode, mods are in use that force the player to remain at level 0 throughout the entire match, which makes the challenge a little bit harder. Now without further ado, as you can see here, I do, um, in fact, I am in fact level 0 SWAT, and I have no perk skills, and no passives, or anything at all. And the goal with this match, or this video rather, is to show you guys the tactics and tricks that I employed to complete the run. Um, I want to give insightful commentary that hopefully teaches you, you know, something new, and um, is also entertaining. So, right off the bat here, I got a really bad spawn. Um, I, say this, I say this in every one of these videos I make, but... Right, at the, right off the bat at the start of these matches, you're very subject to the RNG of the spawn positions in the official maps. In this case, I got the really bad one. Uh, arguably, the basement is the worst place to spawn in on Bolter Manor. Because in order to get out of the basement, you have to walk up the stairs. And when you walk up the stairs, there's a good chance that things can spawn up ahead of you and block the way. But fortunately, as you can see, I got out unscathed. Um, I would say that that's somewhat lucky. That could have went any number of ways. But no matter, I ended up getting out of it okay. And I've now arrived at one of the, of the hold positions. This map's uh, a little bit different than the other matches I've done so far in that I don't actually really have a dedicated hold position for this map. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be moving around between a couple different positions, this being one of them. This U-shaped bend is pretty good um, in general. This is actually where the six-player run, uh, the hold takes place in the six-player run. But unfortunately, I don't have enough manpower to keep that entire area locked down on my own, so I will just be using it as like a pass-through of sorts. This will be It'll be an area where I can like stop and kill some Zeds and uh, get rid of any immediate threats, but I'll more often than not just be moving on from there. Now, this map is uh, very difficult. Um, it's probably one of the hardest maps in the game for very much the same reason that maps like Monster Ball are difficult, and that is that during the kite, there are a lot of blind corners. Uh, there's a lot of small areas and blind corners where Zeds can spawn around the corner and get in your way, or, you know, just generally, you have low visibility. So, the only reason I'm actually kind of hanging out here and not moving on is just because I know that there's only three Zeds left in the wave, but normally, this would not be a good place to stop. You would want to get through this hallway ASAP and get to a more open area so that you can better uh, assess the threats around you. Anyway, one more Zed remaining here, just a Scorpion. Scorpions are pretty dangerous at level 0. Uh, they normally, I mean, they're dangerous in general, but at level 25, you can deal with them relatively easily. At level 0, they're kind of a big deal. Um, don't give Gorfiends any chances at all to, uh, you know, be present any longer than the moment you see them. Basically, just kill them immediately. Like, go out of your way to kill them. They're, they're honestly one of the worst Zeds at level 0. Easily. So right now, um, I want to be working on trying to get two weapons. Number one, I want to get the HRG Bastion, which is a tier 5 that has a shield. And then I want to also gain uh, the HRG Nail Gun. Uh, unfortunately, obviously I don't have the money for either one of those, so I decided to buy the MP5 RAS. And the reason why I chose the MP5 over the Tommy Gun is that the MP5 is a lot more accurate. And in these kind of runs, uh, your ammo efficiency and ammo economy is extremely important. I want to get those weapons that I just mentioned earlier, the Bastion and the Nail Gun, as early as I possibly can. And in order for me to do that, I need to unfortunately skimp a little bit on buying other resources like ammo and armor. So as a result, I have less ammo than I would have normally had in a run like this, in a, you know, a regular six-player game. So I really need to make that ammo count, and it's better to take something that you know you can land the shots with than something that's a little more unreliable. Don't get me wrong, the Tommy Gun's actually not a bad weapon, 
But without a doubt, the MP5 RAS is definitely the more accurate out of the two guns. And I deem that as more important to the run than having uh, damage or you know, anything else like that. Like in general, and with these kind of runs, you want to actually prioritize strategies that are a lot more consistent and safe. Because the goal is just to outlast the wave. Like if you can live and, and keep yourself out of harm's way, it's only a matter of time before you eventually win the wave. And that's the whole point of this challenge at the end of the day anyway, is to win, so... That, uh, that turn that I made into that little U-shaped hallway is actually kind of a bad choice, I would say. Um, that spot is actually very dangerous just because there's only two doorways and it's very small. So it, all it would take is like one bloat uh, to, to block up the entire thing. What I should have done instead is I should have made a left turn and gone up the stairs. And you'll see me do that in future waves. Just uh, something to point out initially here. You can sort of tell, actually, as you're watching this run, how I was kind of figuring it out on the on the fly, like what I wanted to do. But this is a, yet another one of those positions I was talking about where it's not necessarily my main hold, but during the kite, if I happen to make it here, I will use this spot to stop and kill some Zeds because it's relatively open and I can actually perceive threats coming at me and uh, make an appropriate decision to react to those threats. So one, one Zed remaining, again, not really much to talk about in this wave. Waves one, two, 1, 2, and 3 are kind of, uh, they're not, there's nothing really of interest happening in those waves in most games. I'm just trying to gather money to get my better weapons. I guess I can take this moment to talk about the weapons themselves. So. Once again, um, I do want to eventually get my hands on the HRG Bastion and the HRG Nail Gun, which right now I'm about to buy the HRG Nail Gun. Now, the reason why I want the Nail Gun is because out of all the SWAT weapons, the Nail Gun is one of the most effective weapons against large Zeds. Uh, it, it, with, it is just extremely powerful against Flesh Pounds. You can kill Flesh Pounds in less than a magazine with it. By the way, this left path here, this is what I was talking about. You want to go this way whenever you're kiting through this hallway. Uh, but anyway, the HRD nail gun is extremely good against larges, so it's going to be my main large killing weapon. Um, and I decided I wanted to buy it now because I just wanted to have a better weapon than the MP5. I like the MP5, don't get me wrong, it's a very accurate gun, it's a very reliable gun, but it doesn't do much damage. And the nail gun does do a lot of damage, so I wanted to try to take that opportunity to uh, get something just a bit better so I have more, you know, higher chance of actually holding my ground. Here I made a mistake, um, I wasn't looking behind me. There's something that I like to call the 10 second rule in this game, and that is that when you're holding any position at all, don't look at the same spot for more than 10 seconds, especially if you know there's a flank spawn behind you like that. Like, I know there's a spawn there. I was just simply not paying attention, basically. And uh, because of that, I, I, you know, it cost me some damage. I didn't really have any armor, so it doesn't really matter, but still, that could have went any number of ways. I could have actually died from that, so. Every, every couple moments, just, you know, turn around and take a look behind you. Make sure there's nothing coming. You'll be surprised at how many threats you can catch uh, before they manage to actually make it to you. And once again, here is yet another spot that I'm going to be sort of holding out at for just a brief moment throughout my kite. Most of this match is going to be spent on the run. I would say that out of the three that I've shown so far, including this one, this is probably the most dangerous one because when it's time to leave, the only paths that I can take are both really narrow, and they both go through that hedge maze. Getting a little bit nervous here, because I know there's a husk coming up there, and I want to get rid of him and not let him shoot me. But I've also got a lot of stuff on me. But I managed to get rid of him. Ran out of ammo there, the siren. Yeah, see this, uh... That almost went really badly for me there, but it's okay. One Zed remaining, this is the core pass, so just kill him and then that's the wave over with. And it looks like the traitor is underground this time, which is kind of a misplay on my part. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the most important things in these runs is your positioning. I mean, that's arguably important for the entire game as a whole, but especially in this run. You want to 
give yourself as much time to get to the trader and get back to your initial position as possible. And I really should have uh, moved closer to the trader before killing that last said, but I wasn't thinking about it. I think I was more worried about me almost being dead than focusing on killing the Zed. So here I'm going to decide to go ahead and buy armor. Uh, that last wave was a little bit too close of a call for my comfort, so deciding to buy armor here. I've talked about this in all of the runs I've done so far, but armor is a fiercely debated topic amongst uh, HOE players about whether or not it's a good idea to buy armor early in the game. And to that I would just say it really just depends on the player and their confidence level. Um, I am fully confident at playing without armor. However, because this is vanilla and not CD, I'm also very subject to a lot of randomness in, in the game. So I'd rather not chance it, and I'd rather have a bit of a buffer just in case something stupid happens where I'm not just going to die because I have no armor. I probably didn't have to buy a full vest, but at this point I can't buy anything else anyway. Like, I, I need 2,000 dosh to buy the Bastion, so I might as well just buy the armor. I don't really need another gun either because I know that if I'm ammo efficient enough that the um, nail gun can last me for the entire wave, so it's all good. There I managed to get a little bit of money out of the dodge zone there. That's really bad that I got hit by that husk, by the way, but it happens. I think he actually hit a Zed and collateraled me because of that. But anyways, yeah, I got a little bit of money out of that dodge zone, so that's going to help me, uh, aid me in getting my Bastion just a little bit earlier. But I'm, at this rate, I'm probably not going to get it until like wave 6, because it is 2,000 dodge. The Bastion is a really good weapon, um, honestly a bit overpowered of a weapon I would even argue, because it has a frontal projectile shield that you can activate, and when that shield is activated, it will reduce all damage taken by 70%. Yes, you heard me right, 70%. And no, it is a projectile shield, but it actually isn't limited to projectiles only. It will, it will reduce damage taken for everything. So I will be using the Bastion to fortify myself against large sets, basically. Um, it's, it's also not a bad gun, too, from just like a regular uh, primary fire standpoint, but the main reason that you have that weapon in this run is just to, to reinforce yourself so you don't take a lot of damage. It's just a safety buffer through and through, that's all it is. Some players find it really dirty to use. Um, I myself would also sort of, sort of include myself in that, um, but because I got Vulture Manor, for the map for this run, I decided I didn't really want to take any chances with it because this map is actually fairly difficult. And I mean, in the end of the day, whatever, you know, it's the rules allowed, so it doesn't really take away that much from the, the completion. This Edar is being kind of a pain in my ass here. Right there, um, I strafed to my right there so that the rioter was in the way of the laser, and that was indeed intentional because it caused the Rioter to um, take the hit for me, so I didn't get blocked in place by that Edar Tracker. So that's something you can do if, you know, if you're in a pinch and you don't have any ammo loaded or something like that, or the Edar is too far away. If you have a Zed nearby you or an object at all, you can use that to block the laser. So getting closer and closer to being able to buy my Bastion, I'll definitely be able to get it by wave 6. Or, no, actually, okay, so I decided to buy it now. Okay, interesting. I actually had forgotten that I did that. So I decided to go ahead and buy it now, which honestly, looking back on it, isn't really necessarily the worst decision to make. Uh, my thought process here is that I now, I'm now on wave 5, right? So I have a pretty good chance of getting larges, which, speak of the devil, I just literally did right now. There's a flush pod right there. And uh, I'd rather have the damage reduction than have the attack power. I'm more worried about just keeping myself alive at this point. So that's why I bought the Bastion, and yeah. Speaking of larges, um, the earliest you can get larges in general is on wave 3, but it's very rare. You'll usually get your first Scrakes on wave 4 and 5, and your first Flesh Cons on wave 5 and uh, five through 6. 5 through 7, excuse me. But they can spawn earlier. If you're really that unlucky, I've seen Flesh Cons spawn on wave 4 before. So it can happen sometimes, just something you have to keep in mind. The vanilla game is so random, it's virtually impossible to predict what's going to appear and when. Now one disadvantage to the uh, Bastion is just how long the reload is. Um, you really need to time the reloads properly with this weapon. Because if, if you, you know, get yourself in a bad position, 
you're gonna have to sit there and wait and watch a like four and a half second reload. And also the weapon just kind of takes up a lot of your screen too. It's like a pretty... It's a big ass gun and it blocks a lot of your view when you're reloading, which makes it hard to see stuff. There I decided to throw a flashbang. Just to keep those deaths away from me. Don't don't be afraid to use flashbangs. Don't waste them obviously, but like in a situation like that, um, I can afford to, to chuck a flashbang there. If it means that I get through that choke point without taking as much damage, then I think that's worth it. The armor that I would have possibly lost by not using that grenade probably would have cost more than the grenade itself, so it's actually more worth it to just use the grenade. And uh, here's the final spot in my little chain of like hold positions that I was talking about at the beginning of the map. Uh, that spot up there is actually pretty good. It's just like the other spots I've used in my other videos on this run where you want to take the spot where the Zeds can only come from the front or from the side. And in that, in that specific position, uh, Zeds only come from the left and the front, so I can, you know, only have to cover two spots at once, and then if I get pushed and need to leave, then I just drop off the ledge behind me and I have a hide advantage, so I can uh, get a Goomba stomp on any Zeds that are below me. So from now on, um, that's going to be the position that I'm going to be starting the wave in, and then I'll, you know, I'll transition into the other spots I was talking about as I get pushed out. So there's wave, uh, wave, wave 5 complete, and now it looks like I'm still kind of short. I don't think we're going to end up buying the HRD nail gun back again, because I do want to get that gun back at some point. Um, I don't think I'm going to, though, because I'd be very low on money. I'm probably just going to refill my Bastion. We'll see what, we do here, what I do here in a second. Yeah, looks like I just refilled. Yeah, that's the right move to do, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I the Bastion doesn't do as much damage, but I do have a lot of damage reduction now. And even if I get a couple hits, you know, take a couple hits from Flush Pounds, it's okay. I can just end up whittling them down slowly with the Bastion. I'll definitely want to get the Nail Gun next wave, though. I should have enough to afford it by then. So moving up here because I hear a Husk, and I want to catch him before he gets into the room. I also say this every single run as well, but you want to be careful with doing uh, husk backpack shots like that, because if there had been a flush pound on the field at that moment, then, and he was near the husk, then blowing up the husk next to him would have raged him. So you want to be uh, very careful and just double check your environment before you go for a backpack shot. Like that. Backpack shots are really good. They you can kill so many Zeds with one shot. And, uh, you know, it's a very ammo-efficient way to clear the wave, but you just have to be careful about flush pounds. Here I decided to stun that QP. Right now, I'm more worried about looking at the front of the kite here, because I need to make sure this door right here is clear. So, I just wanted to stun that, that QP so that I could, uh, turn my attention to the front end real quick. Welding that door there because I need time to reload. Both those QPs are really low. I just need to reload though because I only have five, five bullets remaining. And uh, as you can see, it worked out for me really well there. That's, uh, that's a moment where doors can actually be pretty helpful. Uh, doors otherwise, though, in, in these kinds of runs, honestly, are kind of a liability. Uh, Zeds are able to shoot through doors. Like husks, for example, can shoot you directly through a, a uh, not a closed door, um, an open door. They can shoot you directly through it. So I tend to just want to get rid of them so that I don't get cheap shotted by something. But, uh, you know, in that situation, the door actually helped out a lot. It delayed the QPs, so... Anyway, 17 Zeds remaining. We're coming up on the end of the wave here. Not really much to talk about other than that. Uh, just, you know, watch watch all sides uh, as much as you can. The 10 second roll, as I was talking about earlier. You know, I turned around and I, I managed to catch that bloat. And imagine if I hadn't done that, he would have ninja his way up behind me and vomited on me, and that uh, would have resulted in a lot of armor loss and maybe even a death, so... Just don't forget about checking your environment. As part of being... As part of improving your um, situational awareness and your overall game sense is just trying to get used to the fact that you need to check around here often. 
and that's going to be wave six. So conveniently, the trader is down below me in the basement, and this time I'm actually close to it, so I should be able to get my, my stuff and then get back up to the hold. Uh, this time, I would say that I probably will be buying the my HRG nail gun back again. Um, I should have the money for it, so... Yeah, and indeed, I do buy the weapon back again. Um, as far as buying ammunition here, I want to make sure that I have all my flashbangs. That's very important to have full flashbangs. And I decided to fill up a nail gun instead of fully refilling the Bastion because the nail gun's bullets are a little bit more valuable. Uh, they, they, you know, they do more damage. Uh, one thing I haven't said about the nail gun, actually, is that the nails can bounce. And that can sometimes actually help you out. It can help you or doom you. Um, it usually is helpful though, because the nails bouncing can sometimes hit Zeds multiple times, and that's a lot of uh, extra, you know, productivity out of that one round. So definitely prioritizing filling the nail gun here is the smart move, as opposed to filling the Bastion. This is my main DPS gun anyway. The Bastion is just here for me to clean up, you know, weak enemies and also primarily uh, soaking up flesh pound hits. There's a husk and heat to my side there. That's unfortunately going to force me to leave. I don't want to lose any more armor. Armor is your best friend in these kind of runs. You really want to try to conserve that as much as you possibly can, uh, just because it reduces so much damage taken. A full set of armor will reduce damage taken by 75%. Um, and as it erodes, uh, it will begin to, to reduce damage a little bit less and less, but... Having any amount of armor in general is better than having none. So if you can avoid taking a hit and saving that armor, then, then you should do so. Um, and one other thing about other reduction sources, like the Bastion, for example, has the projectile shield. Those reductions are done before the armor is actually affected by damage taken. So what this means is that if you were to use the Bastion and block an attack, that's obviously going to reduce the damage of the attack, right? It is that reduced value which is then compared against the armor not the original damage value. So what that means is that if you um, use shields and other means of blocking damage, you actually result in losing less armor than if you didn't use the shield. Because all um, reductions in this game are multiplicative. They all stack directly on top of each other. Also, this this QP spawn was kind of trolly. I don't want to fight Zeds here, uh, because it's just way too compromised. Uh, there's there's spawns all around me there. And one thing about SWAT is that unlike other perks like Support or Demolitionist or even Gunslinger, your takedowns take quite a while. You really have to commit to killing larges. It's not just like something that, oh hey, there's a flush pound, let me kill him in two seconds. Like You're going to have to sit there and shoot him for a while. So you want to have a lot of room to get your kills, and that is why I decided to use two flashbangs there to just get the keep these stunned. So that way I could get past them and get into a better position to actually fight them. And, and you know, there were also just Zeds all around me too. It just would have been a bad idea overall to try to fight them there. So it's the best choice that I, made, I could have made to uh, to get out of there. So just don't be afraid to use your flashbangs like that. Again, don't waste them. But, I mean, if they can save you from getting hit, that's what they're for. Use them. You don't really need to worry about using them to stun larges because you have the nail gun. And the nail gun... Just dumpsters on large is like no problem anyway, so you'll see that later on in this run. I mean, it, it's you can kill a flesh pound in less than a magazine with it, so again, use your stuns for survivability. And you know, if you can, then sure, stun largest with them, but prioritize them for survivability and utility. And I think that goes with any uh, perk in this run, in this challenge, that has grenades or tools that are utility based. Use them for utility, don't use them for damage. This is not a this is not about dealing a lot of damage, this is about playing smart and surviving the wave. So anyway, reaching the end of wave seven here. Uh, this last Z, I think it's a Scrake, yep it is. So I'm gonna take out the nail gun here and you can see how powerful the nail gun actually is. And you know, even if um, the gun already does a lot of damage, but even without the damage, just disregarding that for a second. The nail gun has a lot of uh, stubble power, and and you know it has a lot of power to jostle Zeds around. So just shooting Zeds with the nail gun is is very 
it's very disruptive to them, right? You can keep Zeds from hitting you by just shooting them. Because the that's just how the weapon works, so... It practically becomes a free scrape kill at that point. Now, like always, with uh, spots like this where you're kind of near a ledge, do make sure to keep... Just try to keep a little bit of uh, attention in the back of your mind about what's going on behind you. Sometimes, if you're unlucky, a husk might walk out, like, behind you. For example, there's a basement right below me right now, and a husk might come out of that basement, and if he does, he's gonna turn and try to shoot me. And if he shoots me, um, that could be really bad if I'm in the middle of doing something else, so... Just listen, keep your ears out and listen for stuff like that below you, or behind you, or wherever, uh, you know, relative to wherever you are on the map. Once again, uh, I talked about this in a previous video as well, but I'm utilizing what's known as tap firing here with the Bastion, and that is basically when you just click your left mouse button instead of holding it down to achieve fully automatic fire. And the reason why you'd want to do this in KF2 is uh, to ensure... Oh wow, this is a bit of a crazy situation here. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. So yeah, real quick to finish my thought about tap firing. Uh, you want to tap fire to increase your accuracy because with most weapons, the first shot in the magazine always goes to the center of the screen. Sorry, the first shot in a ball, not in the magazine, but just like when you begin shooting, your first bullet always goes like close to the center of the screen. Now that uh, that situation that just happened back there in that room was pretty close. Um, I had two elite crawlers and uh, a screak and everything was just kind of collapsing on me at the same time there. And I managed to get by by jumping on top of the crawlers. That's something that a lot of players don't really realize you can actually do. Uh, you can Goomba Stomp Zeds by landing on them. Oh wow, I got a dodge there on that <laughs> FP. That was actually unintentional. So I realized here with these larges uh, that going the way that I was running was not going to be a good idea, so I decided to just circle back around the other direction. I need to weld this door so I can reload here. I need my nail gun to be fully loaded because that's my large killing weapon. So, reloading that. Um, and then, anytime the flesh bounty is close to me, I'm just going to activate the projectile shield. And take a look at my damage taken when this happens. You know, you're talking about reducing what would normally be like a 65 damage hit down to like 13. Uh, which I don't think I really need to explain that that's kind of broken. So it definitely it definitely allows the SWAT player to just like not really give a shit honestly that there's flesh bounds in the field. Like normally you you'd want to prioritize killing these ASAP and not letting them chain rage, but I don't really have to give a shit when I have a weapon that can reduce my damage taken by so much. I mean look at that, I lost I lost like what 15 armor and like 10 not even five health. I don't know, it's crazy. Okay, so right here, I want to talk about this flesh pound, uh, that second flesh pound there. So that's the HRG nail gun takedown for the flesh pound. What you want to do is you want to switch the gun to the single shot mode, which if you look at the bottom right of my screen, you can see the single nail. You want to uh, swap the gun to single shot mode and shoot at the flesh pound enough where he begins to rage. And once he begins raging, you change firing modes to the triple shot mode and then unload on his head. And you want to do that from like a medium distance because you don't want the flesh pound to lunge at you. So you, it's kind of hard to explain, but you basically want to get close enough to where he's not going to lunge at you, but you can still hit him reliably. And then once he starts raging, you just walk up to his face and just unload the nail gun on him in triple shot mode. And uh, the flesh pound, will, he won't survive for longer than like two seconds when you do that, so. Anyway. End of wave eight, wave eight and uh, we're getting pretty close to completing this game here. Already, this game feels like it's going by really fast. Finally getting my upgrade on the nail gun. Uh, the HRG Bastion is a tier 5, so it, it's unupgradable anyway. So there's only one obvious choice for your upgrade here, and it's just going to be the nail gun, which uh, just so happens to get a really, really big damage upgrade from uh, that first upgrade. So definitely worth investing in that. at least one. Getting the second one doesn't hurt at all either, but at least one upgrade is uh, sufficient. So anyway, beginning wave 9. And right off the bat, I hear a scrape already, 
So we want to try and catch him as early as we possibly can. It turns out he's right in front of me. So that's good. That means I can kill him in time and not uh, lose my ground. So I can actually keep my position. And now I hear a husk, so I'm going to go and peek the door again. Try and get him real quick before he enters the room. But don't forget the 10 second roll. Make sure you're looking around you at all times. Don't commit too heavily to a lean. Now, unfortunately, um, because of all that extra stuff that walked in the room, I uh, didn't get a chance to get that husk, so I unfortunately had to walk out of the room, but it's okay. I would have wanted to leave anyway because of these quarter pounds that spawned, so it kind of works, just works out that way for me. Here again, I want to pay attention to the area up ahead of me. Oh yes, uh, there was one thing I was talking about earlier that I just like never finished because of that big large spawn that I got. But I was talking about how the crawlers almost trapped me back there in that room and I was able to hop over them. And that's just something that you want to, um, it's a really good tactic against crawlers. You can actually do this to any Zed in the game, but with crawlers it's obviously really easy to do because they're so short that you can just jump on their head. So if you ever um, are not sure if you can, you know, kill a crawler for any reason, just jump on his head and it'll give you some time to reload or do whatever you gotta do. And in the case of elite crawlers, it's actually extremely helpful for them because it will stun them and you can just get an easy headshot and prevent them from exploding, so... Flashing again just to ensure I make it past the Screak safely. And I need to reload everything right now. There we go. Now I have to read to kill the Screak. It's a bit risky for me to be reloading right here, just because uh, there's a really good chance that things can come up from in front of me, like that one stalker right there did. Actually, two of them. But, um, you know, it worked out okay. Half of the stuff in this game is just kind of taking a chance and just hoping it works out. Because you can't really, like, fully predict, like, what's gonna happen. There's just so much RNG at play. But, that being said, you do sort of get the feel for it, um, of, like, when it's safe to do things. Right now, it's been abnormally quiet. And, like, every video this happens to me, I talk about how nothing's happening and then suddenly I get a ridiculous spawn like this. So, yeah, I got a triple FP. This is probably one of the worst vanilla squads that you can possibly get, getting a triple FP at the same time. But, the nail gun is really good, and I have the Bastion, so... If one of the FPs do get close enough to me that they pose a threat, I could just whip out the Bastion and null nullify almost all the damage. That FP hit me for 5 armor and 5 health on an attack that would have normally done 65 damage. So I just get to kill him for free, basically. Gosh, I feel kind of dirty using this weapon. I'm not gonna lie. But, you know, the name of the game is Survival, so we're just gonna roll with it. But, yeah, the reduction of damage is just kind of insane with the Bastion. That is a... 70% is just an insane number. Anyway, that's Wave 9. That triple FP spawn is one of the worst spawns you can get. Thankfully, I got it in a room where there was actually like room to get around them, like in here. Because if that had happened in any other spot, uh, that would have been a bad time for me. Even if I had a flash, there's a good chance that they would have gotten in my way anyways, and like I just wouldn't have been able to get through the room. So that's what I was talking about at the beginning of this video, where I was saying that one of the biggest challenges of Vulture Manor is that there's almost no visibility. There's so many blind corners. You just have to be ready for that kind of stuff, and... Um, you know, what I was trying to say before the Flesh Pounds actually did spawn was that you know that there's going to be larges on a given wave. Like, after wave 7, after wave 5 actually, really, there are going to be larges no matter what in a wave. You can guarantee there will be larges 100%. What you cannot guarantee is when they will spawn, and here I got them at the beginning. But you don't actually know when that's going to happen. That could be at any point. So the common rule that I like to go by with these runs is that if I haven't heard larges spawn for a long time, I can almost guarantee that they're going to appear soon. They 100% are going to appear soon. And that's relevant because you want to make sure that when that happens, you're not in a bad area of the map. You want to be in an area that allows you to actually take them on. So just something to keep in mind as you're playing, you know, through these matches, and that's honestly just general KFT knowledge, like that applies to everything and not just the level zero challenge. Although in obviously the level zero challenge, it's 
very, very helpful where you're trying to save armor. Um, I decided to chuck two flashes on those Gorfiends there just because I didn't want to fucking deal with the damage. I would say that was worth it because I prevented myself from getting hit by them. And then now I'm just clearing up these Gorfiends. Oh, sorry, these quarter pound behind me. That quarter pound there just made, made absolutely no noise. He was basically a ninja. So he unfortunately got a hit off on me, but it's okay. It's whatever. I've got the Bastion and. The Bastion's reduction with the reduction of my body armor is uh, a bit broken, so... <laughs> as long as I don't do anything stupid, uh, I'll be able to survive this wave, no problem. Like, basically the only thing I can die from at this point is just getting stuck. Like, just straight up getting trapped, and... You really shouldn't be getting trapped as long as you're observing the 10 second roll. See? There's a crawler behind me. Don't look at any one lane for too long. And uh, you should be okay. Now this scrape here, that's a risky takedown on my part. I still managed to get the kill, but I ended up taking a hit for that. That's kind of not good, honestly, because there's 37 Zeds remaining. And it's wave 10. And on wave 10, there's typically two spawns of Flesh Pounds, so I probably have another Flesh Pound spawn coming up soon. I got that one at the beginning of the wave earlier, as you saw, but I'm sure there's going to be one more. And losing that bit of armor from that was honestly not very good. Especially because I did forgot to block it with the Bastion, but it's okay. It's just something to keep in mind though. You know, you want to generally try to play safe and not lose armor. I should have just not taken on that Skrake. Scrake. Skrakes are so slow and they don't do anything until you rage them, so there's no reason to rush a Skrake kill or like rush a takedown. Especially if you're not confident that it's safe. And Skrakes are actually useful for more than just like, you know, not useful necessarily, but they're that's the wrong word, but uh, Scrakes are also just like... They're good. They're a good way of uh, cluttering up the spawn the spawn queue. Because when Scrakes are alive and you're just leaving them alive and not, not shooting them, they're preventing other Zeds from spawning into the game, because there's a maximum number of Zeds that can be alive at any given time. Which in Hell on Earth, by the way, solo it's 12. So if you can fill up the spawn uh, queue with Scrakes, then nothing else can appear, so you can choke the spawns. And uh, I guess I'm not going to get that last spawn. Or maybe I just get that last flesh bound spawn like right at the last second here, but I think it would have appeared by now, so I guess I'm just not going to get any more. That's RNG, because I've had runs where I do get multiple flesh bound spawns. But, you know, it's better to play safe than sorry. If I had gotten one, um, I would have been relatively okay. Thanks to having uh, some armor remaining. Anyway, the rules for level 0 challenge critical mode state that completing wave 10 is sufficient to complete the challenge. So after I kill these last two enemies, uh, I will have completed the challenge officially. So this was a Vulture Manor as SWAT level 0 challenge. I will be fighting the boss just because I feel like the run is in control without the boss fight. Oh wow. Okay, right there, um, I need to talk about that real quick. That is something really unfortunate that can happen with fla flashbangs. For some reason, flashbangs actually like have some physical power to them that launches Zeds around. And if you throw a flashbang right below a scrape or even a flush pound, it sometimes can like lift them off the ground for some reason. And if that happens, that will take precedence over the stun. So basically, my stun did absolutely nothing. And I obviously wasn't expecting that to happen, so the scrape got a hit on me. That's just something to keep in mind that can happen. It's I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, but um, it's it's honestly pretty rare. It's just it, it can happen. Here I'm buying another nail gun just so in case I need it. I don't end up actually needing it, I don't think, but um, if I do, then it's there. And I decided to get another upgrade on it. So yeah, anyway, I do want to show you guys the boss uh, just because I think that the run is not as complete without it, and hopefully there's some like cool tricks that maybe I can show you on the boss. Now the boss in this run is going to be the Patriarch, who is probably the easiest boss in the game. However, um, when you're playing solo, it's actually quite difficult to get the kill on him before he heals, especially a SWAT. And you'll see in this uh, boss fight that I actually get very close to killing him several times. But you know, it's one of those things where if you can manage to get a kill on Pat before he can fully heal, then of course go for it. But don't stress too much about it if you can't. Like, you're gonna win the fight purely on just a war of attrition, right? You're gonna deplete his, uh, his, his health bars, so... 
Go for the kill if you can, but if you can't, you know, don't don't beat yourself up. It's not a big deal. Um, fighting Pat is very similar to fighting the Matriarch, which if you watch my support video on Spillway, on that video I had the Matriarch as the boss. And in that boss fight, I basically just ran in circles around an object to prevent her from mailing me and grabbing me. And it's very much the same with Patriarch, except for the fact that in Patriarch's case, uh, he will attempt to shoot you with his rockets and his minigun. So here I'm trying to actually get the kill on him. I was trying really hard to, so I threw some stun grenades there to try to get a stun. Hopefully delay him from leaving the room, but he's just so fast, and my reloads are way too slow. So I just decided to let him go. It's not worth it. Like, honestly, I have nothing to complain about here. I have 100 HP, 100 armor, so... You know, as long as I keep playing like this, like, I'll eventually win. It's just gonna be a little bit longer than I would've wanted it to be. Uh, but anyway, going back to what I was saying. So, Patriarch and Matriarch are best handled by running around a small object. Uh, that allows you to get around corners, because you want to LOS through ranged abilities like that minigun. That minigun is very, very powerful, and... Uh, will result in you losing quite a bit of armor and health, so... You know, as a result of that, you also don't want to be in wide open areas like this for too long. You want to try to get to cover as quickly as you can. That's pretty bad there. I actually got stuck on that corner of the wall and he managed to get a hit off on me. So I lost quite a bit of armor there. If I would have had the Bastion out, I could have reduced that just a little bit. But I unfortunately didn't, so... You know, it is what it is. But yeah, see there, as you can see there, me being around the corner let me dodge the, the, chest, the chest tentacle grab and uh it's also gonna let me dodge these rockets here so anyway that's basically the tactic just keep circling around this dodging all of his ranged abilities when he goes to heal try to get the kill but if you can't don't worry about it uh prioritize killing the adds and just getting ready for the next cycle here i'm trying to stun him again because i was going to try to get another kill but unfortunately i needed one more stun grenade to get the stun so he's gonna get away again, and it's a bit heartbreaking, but, you know, again, it is what it is, can't complain. We're gonna use this opportunity to pick up some ammo, finish off these stragglers that have spawned, and then get back to position and repeat. That's really it, there's really not much else to say about this boss, that's pretty much the boss fight uh, in its entirety. If I just had a bit more firepower, um, I could I could have probably killed KF or not KFP, sorry, I could have probably killed Pat there, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, the reason why I am it looks like I'm just kinda standing there and stalling. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to bait Pat into using his rage attacks on me. When when you're in an open area, it's very much like the matriarch. When you're in an open area, and he hasn't used his ranged attacks in a while. I actually don't know what the like minimum timer is, but when he hasn't used his ranged attacks in a while, and you're in an open area, he'll try to use his guns on you. And um, in or when you're hiding him, you actually want to bait him into doing this. So it's it's the most productive to run in an open area, but stay nearby a corner, so that you can bait him into using his attack, and then as soon as he does try to attack you, you just back around the corner and dodge it. Which is why I ducked behind that piano uh, when he was trying to shoot the minigun at me earlier when I came into this room. And for fighting Matriarch, it's, it's exactly the same way, except it's a little more important for her. Because she has her Tesla beam, which can which can kill you in like two shots, so... Anyway. Pat's almost ready to go into his red health state, so... Just a couple more shots here and he should be running the heal again, there he goes. Again, I got so close to killing him. This actually was my best chance of killing him, I think, out of all of them. But unfortunately, I just... The Bastion just doesn't do enough damage. I think what would have helped me there, um, in hindsight, is if, like, I had put... Another HRG nail gun. Like, I could, what I could have done there is I could have placed a second HRG nail gun... On the ground there, so that when I run out of ammo on the first one, I could just dump my nail gun and get a second one and immediately have full ammo. That might have actually been the play if I wanted to get the kill there. Um... But, you know, again, I'm just gonna say it one more time, don't, don't worry about getting the kill in one healing phase. It's cool if you get it, but it's not something you should be, like, going crazy over trying to pull off. So, anyway, he's healed again now, this is his final stage, and I just need to get back to that, that bed and that master bedroom. And, uh, that should be the match. 
caught me off guard there. He caught up to me a lot faster than I expected. And Patriarch can be particularly annoying at times because he sometimes will not make any noises when he's attacking. Like, I actually have the dialogue off right now. Like, I have all the voice lines turned off. But um, even when you have the voice lines on, you sometimes he sometimes doesn't make any sounds when he melees you. So I just had no idea that he was going to do that, and because of that I wasn't ready to, to block it. But it's okay, it happens, and uh, you know, as long as I don't get hit again, I'll be, I'll be safe. There, I was listening carefully, and I heard that there were more Zeds from the previous uh, healing cycle that were still alive. So I prioritized uh, quickly killing them, because obviously you don't want them getting in your way during this loop. Just something to keep your mind uh, alert for. Listen for any sounds of other Zeds approaching, and if that happens, ignore the boss. Uh, focus on getting them down so they're out of your way. Anyway, I'm just about out of nail gun here, so I'm gonna swap over to the Bastion. And uh, you know, if if Pat gets close enough to me where I feel like I'm gonna take damage, then all I have to do is just turn on the shield, and I can reduce that damage by 70% because this gun is uh, very balanced. Honestly, I think the main problem that I have with the Bastion, since there's not really much else to talk about right now, I might as well talk about it. I think the main problem that I have with the Bastion overall is that it just doesn't really take much effort to use. Um, there are many sources of damage reduction in this game, you know, armor being one of them, of course, but like, for example, melee weapons, right? You can, there's an entire blocking mechanic in this game where you can parry attacks and by parrying attacks and blocking them uh, at a certain time, you can reduce your damage taken. And it's like, there's such a robust system for that in this game, and then SWAT gets a gun where they can just turn on, you know, they click one button and then reduce all attacks by 70%. So to me, it just doesn't make sense uh, why Berserker has to work to actually get the reduction. But anyways, uh, that's the match over and done with. That was Vulture Manor as SWAT, level zero challenge critical mode. I hope that you guys learned something new from this video and hopefully you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for tuning in and um, I will be posting more of these soon. I'm having a lot of fun making them, so I hope you're having just as much fun watching. Anyway, once again, thank you so much, and have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video.